Did Glenn write it? I was sent a script and they asked if I would be interested in doing 1980 playing our characters and I assume they sent it to you, I guess. No. <laughs> they did. Well, once again, that memory <laughs> thing is a little vague. I remember different other parts of the year 1980, which I could tell you all about, but they don't have a lot to do with no, I wasn't, people always said, you know, you were, were, were we offered, or maybe, I was never sent a script, never offered to be in it or anything, okay. like this. it just all happened, until Glenn sent me that script, he said, would you, I'm doing, the, we're doing the last episode, there's a script, and I, I want, you to, want you to do it, and I read it, it was great, and I said, I would love to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> Richard, do you, uh, you actually wrote several Galactica novels, and also, independently of other talk of reviving the series, uh, financed your own um, project, Black Balser Galactica and the Second Coming, which I know Jack was in. And um, what about the series, as, as a creative person, so resonated with you that you still occupy the universe of Galactica? Yeah, well, you know, it's, um, first of all, I'm, I'm a, from the time I was eight, I was a dedicated sci-fi, you know, um, reader. I mean, I love space. I love anything to do with space. Um, you know, the space program, call it what you will. But I read every science fiction book I could get my hands on. So, Battlestar for me, the core story of Battlestar to me, is one of the most powerful stories I've ever read. I mean, it's an iconic story. This this search for, for, for a human civilization somewhere else in the universe, searching for Earth. Um, I just thought there was something extraordinary in that that journey after a holocaust, trying to survive, trying to live every day, not knowing whether you're going to live or die. I thought, what an incredible premise for drama, right? Um, and so I think just about anybody, in fact, Battlestar was one of the few series where you didn't have to be a sci-fi fan to like Battlestar Galactica. Both shows, the new show and the old show, you had people cross over that had never liked sci-fi before because it was a very iconic, powerful story. Um, so I just, I love science fiction and I write in science fiction and so I just started developing some, some story ideas to bring back Battlestar because nobody was doing anything. Uh, they were bringing back shows like Chips and a whole bunch of other shows and I kept thinking, how in the world are they bringing these shows back and they're not bringing back Battlestar Galactica. So I, I wrote these stories up, I went to Universal, I started pitching it. Nobody even knew they owned Battlestar Galactica. They, they had no clue what it was. Um, I went through every office, went to the, you know, the legal area, talked to everybody I could, and eventually um, they started realizing that I kind of had an interest in this. And when the Sci-Fi Channel began to play Battlestar Galactica, all these companies came in to want to license new toys, games, stuff like that. So I got involved in writing the books and involved in some of the other productions of Battlestar Collectibles. And eventually I said, you know, I want to really find a powerful way to pitch Battlestar and show them how you could update it from where it was, build a bridge to the future. So I put together this little animated trailer. I mean, it started as a kind of a storyboard with music and voiceover. And then I said, why not a little cut scene, you know, a little animated scene, and went and shot one of those. And then I started getting all these people from all over the country willing to drive in with their costumes, with their pistols, with their outfits, because I had no budget. So I'm in this no budget production, and then I get people like Volker Engel, who won the Academy Award for ID4, special effects supervisor. I had Dean Cundey, the DP for Jurassic Park and Apollo 13. I had all these people willing to come on board film, bring cameras, bring equipment, bring stuff. So we started this epic production that started as a little storyboard, grew into this uh, second coming trailer. And let me tell you, when we played it at Comic-Con back in 19, it was either 99, 2000, everybody showed up. We had thousands of people, because they'd all heard about this mythological trailer that nobody knew was real. And when we played it, I swear to God, they put us in the biggest hall, went back multiple screens, we played it, and I'm sure if you've ever made anything, you know, the big terrifying fear is that they're gonna hate it, right? And so I put a lot of energy in trying to build a bridge from the past to the future, and when we played it, there was this long, epic silence after we played it for about, felt like forever, and then all of a sudden, everybody exploded into this big standing ovation for the show, and I realized that there was, and this was kids, 
21, 25, 28, who were not even alive when Battlestar had come out. So that's when I really started pitching the show to Universal, saying, you know something, this show, this iconic story, really has something for a lot of people. But they could never get it. And after I pitched uh, Universal, Glenn Larson pitched, then Tom DeSanto and Brian Singer, who produced X-Men, they had their version, which by the way, they're working on a movie version of the original right now. Um, and then eventually, they, Sci-Fi Channel, didn't want to do the original show. And uh, that's when I think uh, Ron Moore got involved and they did the reimagining version. But I just, I think the story is an amazing story. It has something to say to everybody. And I think it's going to go on. I think there's going to be more and more Battlestar. I don't know how many of you know Blood and Chrome. Anybody hear about Blood and Chrome? Uh, Blood and Chrome deals with Adama and Ty when they're Viper pilot age. And they filmed the pilot of that. Uh, I think you can even see the pilot on YouTube. And I believe Sci-Fi is finally going to play that series. So there should be another Battlestar Galactica series coming out. So. Um, speaking of the 2003 series, I, I know Dirk has publicly said that you weren't a fan of the show at all. The what now? The, the reimagining. I think Dirk has said publicly you weren't a fan. I was working, I spent money, time, energy for about five years trying to bring back the original show. So for me, every time they bring back a classic, is this not true? Every time they bring back a classic, what do they do? It's Shut usually it cheesy, it's stupid, <laughs> it's totally fracked up. And I thought, this is good. You know, if there wasn't kids in this audience, I have a whole story about frack, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Seriously. Um, um, where was I? What was it? What was it? You said yeah. frack up. Yeah. What? When they bring back a classic show. Oh, they, so, they, so I figured they were going to screw it up. And so when I helped produce the uh, 25th Battlestar Anniversary Convention, and so I decided, because Universal didn't want to do our version, I decided to invite everybody that was interested in doing something with Battlestar to come to the convention, and I invited Ron Moore. And everybody was pissed off because they had heard, you know, he's going to do this stupid, silly, cheesy version, 90210 version of, of Battlestar. And he had made this comment because he was so upset at all the criticism that he said, look, if you don't like it, you know, throw popcorn. And so guess what? I met the panel, Ron Moore's being introduced. And all of a sudden, in the back of the room, I see big bags of popcorn being brought out. I thought, oh, crap. You know, guy with popcorn, you know? And, and believe it or not, I actually, um, for me, uh, I got a chance to, I stood up, because I, I looked at the trailer and I thought, this is so different from Battlestar, I'm not sure I like this at all. But I said, the one thing I knew, this wasn't Battlestar 90210. This, this Battlestar had vision, it had artistry, it had somebody intelligent behind it. Um, and then when I got a chance to uh, get to know Ron Moore, he invited me. He said, look, if I do Battlestar, if it gets picked up, would you be interested in doing something? And I have to be honest, I was really conflicted because I put so much energy into the, you know, bringing back the original show. And when I watched the four-hour miniseries, I don't know about you, but it was so different from the original. It was very hard to embrace or to really look at it objectively. But the minute it got into episode one, which I think is one of the most powerful episodes, uh, I fell in love with this new Battlestar, and I thought it was the most provocative, edgy, powerful sci-fi show I'd ever seen. So uh, and that's when I got really, really lucky, and this guest star role turned into an ongoing movie show. So yeah. I'm going to wrap this up with two last questions. The first one is, finally, do you think there's a place for classic Galactic in today's entertainment climate? Um, and, if, and obviously, if the circumstances were right, would you all want to reprise your roles in another reiteration of the series? Uh, Dirk, could you start up again? I did Starbucks last night, but nobody was there. And the question is not whether I would do Starbucks, would anybody else do Starbucks? Because, uh, well, it's, it's not going to happen. Let's be honest. So, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to play Starbucks again, ever. <laughs> As a Although I did play Lieutenant Clumbo on stage in England, all over the United Kingdom for 24 weeks, one of the great experiences of my life in 2010. It was a Broadway play originally. I got to do that. That was great. No, it's not going to happen because it well, didn't happen. Go see, it Tom DeSanto wrote a wrote. Tom DeSanto was going to do it as a series. He wrote Starbucks. Starbucks is it. It was fantastic. He sent me the script. I was going to play it as a 55-year-old Viper pilot. 
trainer. He was still drinking, still smoking, still the same Starbucks. He was full of all the pathos of what happens to a, a human being, a guy who refuses to grow up, you know, that, that archetype. But the network didn't let him do it. They're not gonna let him, they weren't gonna let him do that. And when they came then to regurgitate, reimagine it, they, they, uh, they're not gonna let Starbuck be on. Not the Starbuck I played, I can't, that's not gonna be on television. He's a womanizer, he's politically incorrect, he's a scoundrel. So, he's gone. So Starbuck will never again be on television. Not my Starbuck. Well, I mean, you have Katie Sackhoff's Starbuck, you can have that Starbuck, or you can have a, uh, you know, but you cannot have a guy do what Starbuck did in the original Battlestar Galactic. That was 70s. That's all gone. That's forbidden. Forget, forget the smoking. That, that's forbidden. It was almost forbidden then. I had to fight. Almost got fired over the freaking cigar. And now people love it, but it was like, you know, one more cigar and he's fired. So, it's just, it, there's not going to be, you can't have that kind of male character on, on television. It doesn't exist. So, that's, what I, that's a little bit of how I feel about it. <laughs> I wrote an article about my views on the new show. I did not hate the new show. I actually never saw the new show, but it, I read the script, the original script of the first thing. And it was, it's called Starbuck, Lost in Castration. And it's out there if you want to read it. It explains my, my views. It's basically... A, uh, philosophical treatise on why the sh one show is one way and what the other show is the other way. But so, uh, there you go. Okay. Well, I, the only thing I'm saying is, is a week ago we never thought we would have seen Star Wars Episode Seven. So, <laughs> stranger things have happened that you know someone with the right money who grew up watching the show could uh, you know want to make a movie or something with you guys. For 2.6 billion? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I guess the last question I'm going to ask all of you is what are you all finally, what are you currently all working on? What are you guys doing? I guess you want to begin with Dirk? Uh, 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 uh. I have a comic book coming out called Dirk Benedict in the 25th Century. Um, Blue Water Productions, yeah. I should say, I have it coming out. I'm just, I was approached, they're doing it, and I'm, I'm co I said if I can write it, because I want to make sure Dirk Benedict was like Dirk Benedict, so he's acerbic and cynical, and, and really underneath it all, just a very shy, frightened human being. So, so and it's taking place, and he's, in, he's at a convention, he ends up in, in the future, and, and so it's been fun, it's been fun, and they're really great artists whose name I can't pronounce, so, uh, they're both Japanese, and they're doing an anime style, and uh, I was hoping to have a, a demo here, but, uh, but it wasn't ready, but soon. So that's, that's okay. Uh, Richard? Yeah, yeah. I'm writing, directing, producing. I teach and lecture all over the country. I uh, have this reality show called Who's a Frack? <laughs> <laughs> really? Go check it out. Seriously. You probably hate me after you see it. It's, uh, it's kind of about the industry and all the crazy ups and downs and everything that happens to us, which most people never see. It's the underbelly of Hollywood. Um, what was it? What was that? Uh, Hollywood show, the, uh, the what, about the guys in the business? Entourage. Entourage. It's really the anti-entourage. It's the real Hollywood story. So uh, we put that together. You can go to whothefrack.com and check it out. Um, and then I, I just finished doing a movie called Dead by Friday, which is a Goodfellas type movie. That play a great role. Um, did another movie called The Pod, which is an old-fashioned sci-fi movie with uh, Vernon Wells from Mad Max. Uh, then another movie called Dark Season, which is a horror movie that's coming out. Um, directed this wonderful period piece uh, that this woman wrote, this really lovely piece in Logan, Utah, uh, called White Wings. And you can go on YouTube and put White Wings trailer and you can see that. And I directed that. And then I just uh, finished this series of internet movies called The uh, Silicon Assassin. I played the Silicon Assassin. I pop in and pop out. Uh, have a lot of fun, doing a lot of damage. Uh, my good friend Brad Lineweaver, this brilliant, brilliant writer, co-writer for me on some of my Battlestar novels, uh, wrote the scripts, and that'll be online soon. In fact, I think you can see some of the episodes now. So, uh, doing a lot of stuff. But my big thing is uh, I'm writing this this movie that I want to. I'm writing, directing, producing. Uh, this kind of a labor of love, and I'm going to put that together this year. And my big thing is this huge. Uh, epic sci-fi thing called Magellan. Some of you might have seen the trailers, 
Uh, I've put them on over the past several years, but we have a novel coming out, a series of graphic novels, um, a game. So there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff with that. Sci-fi, uh, for me, explores the unfathomable. It explores all those theoretical probabilities and possibilities about life. Who are we? Where do we come from? Where are we going? That's what I love about sci-fi. So Magellan has all of that wrapped up into it. So you should be saying something about that next year. Awesome. Noah? Yeah. Um, I got a movie coming out at the end of the month called Sushi Girl with Mark Hamill, Tony Todd, Jeff Fahey, Danny Trejo. Uh, did another movie. I, I got three or four movies coming awesome. out this year. Yeah, just trying to work. Herbert? Still beating the bushes, shaking the trees, and looking for the low hanging fruit out of here. Still an actor, still do film, television, and theater most recently. Um, I did a. Uh, a seven minute, eight minute short with a dear friend, uh, uh, Walter Koenig. Those of you who know Walter, remember Chekhov from the, from the classic track, he's a dear friend. And uh, in fact, did, you, you did a film with him as well, didn't you? Yeah, Richard? See that movie that Walter wrote and uh, started with me called Inalienable? Inalienable, yeah. 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 I, I get pregnant in the movie. <laughs> now this sounds really weird, I know. But it was like an amazing role. You didn't bring that up with your list of uh, projects. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it took me to bring it up. <laughs> anyway, briefly, um, because we have our two cast members here, I'll make this brief. Um, it's an eight minute short that was written and produced by, uh, by, by Walter, and it stars the two of us. And uh, it's sort of a, a a uh, twilight zoning type of a piece where I'm playing a, uh, a character that whose death was caused by him. I'm playing a firefighting lieutenant, he's a firefighter captain who caused the death of my character some 20 years earlier, but we don't realize that until after the, uh, the short is over. Uh, it's, uh, I think you can pull it up uh, online, uh, it's called Handball. Uh, and uh, it's produced and written by, by Walter, and I've uh, got a few other irons in the fire that I'm hoping will uh, catch flame here in the near future. Uh, what I do outside of the industry, I do a lot of, try and do a lot of community service work. I work USO. I work for the Paralyzed Veterans uh, Association, uh, the Wounded Warrior Project. IABA, which is the Iraq Afghanistan Veterans of America, trying to look after our men and women, boys and girls. And, uh, that keeps me busy, and uh, I'm happy to be there. Sarah? Anyway, Sarah, Sarah, you want this one? Or you want oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I'm such an idiot. Well, um, I was in a movie this year uh, that just came out this past week, but it's a little randy, so I'm not saying rush to see it, but it's really fun, it's really funny, but um, it's called One, Two, Three, Frankie Go Boom, and uh, if you go onto the New York Times, they just did an article about it, and they put one of my scenes online, which was pretty fun, so, um, and um, a, a so, and I do a lot of commercials, thank goodness for commercials. And um, I made a film with Patricia Heaton from Everybody Loves Raymond in the middle. Yeah, she's great, she's awesome. And we, we made a movie called The Bituminous Coal Queens of Pennsylvania. And uh, you can get it on Netflix. Uh, I have a couple copies with me, but it, we won several awards and it's really sweet. It's a documentary and uh, it's, it's a really neat, it's sweet, and I'm very, very proud of it. And uh, right now, the best thing that's happened in my life is I'm a mother. So I have a yay! so I have a ten-year-old, and because I became a mother so late in life, I do everything at school. And I'm a Girl Scout leader, and I just took my troop camping with six thousand other Girl Scouts. And um, and actually, I'm working on a movie right now about the life of Juliet Gordon Lowe, the founder of Girl Scouts. You know, as one's career dies down in the film industry, I went back to my roots, which was always my first love, which was the theater, where I was trained. And uh, I am now resident director of two theaters in Monterey, California, and one in San Francisco, because one of my strongest beliefs in the world is to pay it forward. Um, I look at the way 
the acting craft is, is taught now, and I, I find it appalling. So, um, the last thing I performed, and I was very lucky, I got a chance to do Death of a Salesman in San Francisco and got nominated for a Drama Desk Award, which was very nice. Or something, and probably my last role because once you've done Willie, what the hell else are you going to do? Uh, but I actually have a play opening on in Friday in Monterey when I'm here now instead of instead of being there. I have two original plays that I'm scheduled to direct next year, one in Monterey and one one in San Francisco, and I love it. Um, I love directing, actually more than I always love performing. Um, I have always felt having been around. Be shocked directors and people in our industry which is so tenuous and there is no tenure and you're on top of the world one day and people tell you you're not worth the poop the next it is very easy to denigrate and and tell people you are you are no good and it's usually by people who are very fragile with their own egos and what i love to do is take people and actors and sometimes they're professional actors sometimes they're community theater actors but if you have that creative love and that love for doing this sort of thing in your system, you need, you need to do it. Um, you can work in a job from 9 to 5 and hate it, and at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you're ready to go postal in your business environment, and all of a sudden, you go, that's okay, I can get through the next two hours because I get to go to rehearsal at 7. And believe me, it can, it can save your life. So for all of you out there who have ever wanted to try to do what we do, and it's in your blood, go do it. Go do it, and find somebody to mentor you who will never say the word no, because as a director, the word no never comes out of my mouth. I don't believe anything anybody tries creatively should ever be criticized, and that's what I do. I know we're coming to the end here, but I just want to make sure everybody knows, uh, everybody aware of Next year is the 35th anniversary of Battlestar, and uh, so in, in Houston, I believe, where, where exactly in Houston um, is the 35th? It's going to be May 23rd, I believe. Probably in the destroyed No, it's Houston. It's not Dallas, it's Houston. No, it's in Houston, yeah. It's in Houston. So check it out. Go to BattlestarGalactica.com or BattlestarFan.com and check out all the information. I know that they're selling, you know, uh, tickets and stuff like that, so check it out. We want to thank all of you, by the way. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much.